Hey guys, welcome to another episode of Tech Topics. Uh, today I'm going to be talking a little bit about uh, port channels, uh, the differences in load balancing algorithms, and how that translates to what you can configure in the hypervisor. So let's go take a look over here at this design. So as you can see here, I've got two Nutanix nodes separated by two switches, and well, there's only one link between them. So many of you are probably thinking that that's a terrible design, and I'd agree, you've got a single point of failure there. So instead, we want to add a second link. Now the problem with just adding a second link is that spanning tree will then block one of these links uh, to prevent a loop. So now you've got a link that's sitting there completely unused. Rather than doing that, what you can do is you can put them both in a port channel, and I'm sure many of you, or if not all of you, are currently using port, port channels in your environment. Uh, and then that, that tells the switch to treat this interface as a single logical interface for a spanning tree. Now, the most important thing with port channels to remember is that they're not perfect. It's not 50% of the traffic over one, 50 over the other. Rather, it's dictated by an algorithm. That algorithm most commonly is uh, route based on source MAC IP, destination MAC or IP, or a hash of those two. So you can get a route based on source MAC, a source desk MAC, source desk IP. Those give you sometimes a uh, better balance across the two, but it really depends entirely on what you're traffic looks like. So because of that, when this VM talks to this other VM, it will always go over the same link, whatever link it was hashed to. And then the return traffic, it might choose the other link or it might choose the same because this switch makes the same decision. It's always done on a per switch basis. So if you did an iperf test now between these two VMs, you'd only notice a 10 gig uh, speed. Now let's put both because of this here and because you're only using one link. You can't get full 20 gig on between these two VMs. The real benefit comes from when you add additional VMs here. These other VMs might choose to get hashed over the other link, depending on it. Now, you can check what your current balance is on these switches. Here, the Cisco command is found below. This will show you how well your balance is doing, so you can see if the load balancing algorithm you're using is right for you. There's two main methods to do this, uh, to do port channeling on the switches. The first is mode on or unconditionally port channel. The second is LACP, uh, which is a negotiated port channel. The switches exchange PDUs to determine if they're ready to participate in the port channel. Uh, this protects you from misconfiguration because if one of these ports gets accidentally plugged into a wrong switch, you don't black hole your traffic. Therefore, it's always best practice to use LACP when applicable. Just like you can have multiple links here between your, your switches, each Nutanix node has two 10 gig interfaces. And you can connect both of those. Now, by default, ESX does route based on originating port ID, which means that each VM will, always, will get pinned to a single uplink and always use that uplink. In this case, you don't need to configure anything special on the switch because it doesn't see the MAC address moving between the ports. ESXi also provides a mode called route based on IP hash. Now with that, you're doing basically a mode on port channel on the ESX side. So if you configure that on the switch, you've got to configure the mode on on the upstream switch as well. ESXi also allows you to do LACP, but that requires you to have the distributed switch and the distributed switch license, so that's not always an option. There's a couple other uh, really cool load balancing methods available as well, including uh, the load-based teaming, where if a certain link gets over 75% utilization, it'll move some VMs over to another one. So it gives you kind of the best of both worlds there. Hyper-V also uh, does it, but it does it slightly differently. Uh, in Hyper-V, you've got switch independent, which assumes that you're connected to multiple upstream switches, or switch dependent, where it assumes you're connected to a single upstream switch. So if you choose switch dependent and then route based on IP hash, you would need mode on upstream. If you choose LACP on Hyper-V, which doesn't require any special license, you do mode active upstream. So that's, that's port channels in a nutshell. M the most important thing to remember with them is that it's not a perfect distribution. Sometimes you might have a hot link or one link might be uh, underutilized, and it's important to evaluate what your, your traffic load looks like across these so you can choose the best one for your environment. I hope that was useful. Thank you guys for coming and tuning into these tech topics, and uh, I'll see you next time.